So I've always been fascinated by the history behind Dumble amplifiers and the famous guitar players who have used them throughout the years. They're pretty much unobtainable though. You can maybe buy one on Reverb for a few hundred thousand dollars. I think for the rest of us, we might be lucky to find a clone or reproduction. And my friend Taylor Cox built this amp for me. It's an, inspired by a uh, Dumble Steel String Singer, which is a high wattage, very clean tube amplifier. And Taylor is an absolute wealth of knowledge on tube amps and the, the Dumble history. And you guys are gonna hear from him later in this episode. But I really wanted to try this amp because of Stevie Ray Vaughan. He, he played a number of Steel String Singers. And so today we're gonna to try it out and see what it sounds like, see if we can figure out what is the mystery behind that Dumble sound. And I've got it paired today with a 212 Baseman cabinet from the 1960s, which is really similar to what these amps would have been paired with by Dumble, except it uh, looks like a lot of them had Celestion speakers in them. I've, I've got a couple Jensen's, so we're gonna use what we've got today, but I think this thing is gonna have a crazy clean sound and it's also got some unique features in the circuit that we'll get into as well. So let's check it out. Let's see how this steel string singer sounds. So this amp has a lot of headroom. It's four 6L6s and 100 watts. I think they made a 150 watt version as well. And it stays very clean. I think that's why Stevie Ray Vaughan used this throughout his career, as well as guys like Eric Johnson. I think this amp is modeled after specifically Eric's version. Um, but it, it stays clean and it does that very well. I think it has a really nice clean tone. Now this amp also has some really unique features that I'm not really used to coming from the Fender amps that I've used for so long. Uh, it's got some really nice EQ controls, high low pass. It's also got some tone stack dip switches that you might find useful. It's got a really deep reverb and you've got extra controls on that so you can dial it in. I really like the reverb sound on this amp. But also this circuit has some overdrive controls as well and that's something that Dumble uh, was known for. This one has a overdrive switch on the back that I think engages some kind of preamp circuit to push the amp a little bit harder and you can use a pedal to control it if you want. I'm gonna play that for you guys in just a second here but I wanna talk to Taylor about some of the features and uh, design behind the steel string singer. Well, some of the things I've heard about the singer was, you know, he was working with Stevie Ray Vaughan and Stevie was really looking for a super high headroom amp, mm -hmm. um, something that he could fully crank up that wouldn't break up. I mean, he was a uh, pretty heavy handed playing the 13 gauge strings. So I think when he was playing the super reverbs and those twins, I think even at the hundred watt power level, um, you know, he's getting some break up and just wanted something that would stay cleaner. So the steel string singer, I think Stevie's was 150 watts. Um, I think he also had a 100 watt version, but that amp is very percussive and has a ton of headroom. So you know it doesn't break up when you when you uh, really dig into it. I mean, the ones we sell, I, I kind of added it, you know, so that you can actually get some breakup out of them. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, it's the high headroom amp that Stevie wanted. So I think that's kind of where it came from. And if you look in the design, like. Actually, it is the clean channel of an overdrive special. If if you really kind of dig into it, and then what happens is is, is once it goes into the output section, it's a lot different. So um, there's a tube called the cathode follower that right. is a kind of a uh, high output but low distortion stage. And so that's when you when you hear that like really percussiveness when you hear the string slap back on the fretboard, and you can just kind of hear even the flush in your fingertips. 
That's the cathode follower, really kicking up the output, but you don't hear the distortion. So that's kind of the idea is you have the overdrive special tone stack and um, preamp, and then it goes into the cathode follower, which really kicks that up and then goes into the output section. And then there's some additional flexibility with that amp too, with like the click filters. So you actually have two different tone stacks. You've got the traditional treble, middle, and bass, and then the high and low filters, which are like an EQ pass, um, which are set in a different spot of the circuit, um, which is kind of nice if you want like a quick adjustment, you know, you're changing guitars or you just need to drop out some bass or add some treble. Um, they can be pretty cool. And then the huge reverb, you know, so there's a, kind of a Fender style reverb, um, but a lot more control over it. So in the uh, Steel String Singer, you'll see a pretty common theme. It's a it's a two knob reverb control. So there's a send and a return. And the send allows you to set the depth of the reverb and the return sets the level of reverb and how much reverb you have in the mix. <laughs> So the overdrive effect on this amp is pretty limited. This is not like some of uh, Dumble's other overdrive circuits where you can really push the amp hard. You can flip the switch on the back or the foot switch and engage that seems like a preamp overdrive. And it will give you a little bit more of that sound that people talk about with Dumble amps, which is a, a tube overdriven sound, the harmonics. Uh, the distortion that's that's warm. When talking with Taylor, you know, he, he kind of mentioned that the Overdrive Special was really Dumble's most classic, most famous amplifier, and uh, maybe that's what I need to try next. Um, Robin Ford is the one that comes to mind who who used the Overdrive Special, and of course he's known for having an amazing tone. So uh, perhaps that's really the one I need to get a hold of to understand what the appeal is behind the Dumble amps. But, you know, if you're playing really big venues that can handle an amp like this and you want a super clean, tight tone, 
that's what the steel string singer is. I wanna finish out this video by uh, talking to Taylor a little bit more about the steel string singer, and then I'll follow it up with just letting it rip. I'm just gonna turn it up uh, and try to find the settings that I, that I really think sound best with this amplifier, maybe run some pedals through it, and just have a little fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Let's finish up this interview, and uh, I'll play you guys a little bit more. Stevie's amps always really interested me. And so um, I, I guess you're saying he had multiple steel string singers. And I believe that goes back to playing, um, gosh, who was it uh, in the studio? Jack, I think Jack, he had Jackson, Jackson Brown's. Yeah, it, it, yeah, that that was inspired from Jackson Brown's studio where he played uh, his first Dumble. So you, you think he had an amp that was maybe the 150 watts and the 100 watt 6L6 version, but they were... For for the most part, they were they were similar. It wasn't something unique that Dumble built necessarily. I don't know. So there's I've seen like tons of speculation online of how many steel string singers that there actually are. I've heard some guys say as many as twelve. Um, I don't think I've seen a serial number higher than than six or seven. I think Kirk Kirk Hammett had one for sale a couple of years ago that sold for like four hundred fifty thousand or something absurd. Maybe even been more than that. Um, so I'm not entirely sure on the lineage i've seen the first one i think was a combo 100 watt combo he may have built for henry kaiser and then number two is uh is a famous one um that that mayor has currently and that one was originally built for jackson brown and i'm wondering if that's the one that stevie played originally and um i want to say stevie's stevie had that one eventually he got it from Jackson Brown, and then he had number four, and I think number four was the the King Tone Cole. I can never say it right. The King Tone console, um, and that was 150 watts, and that's the one that he always is. You know, there's pictures of him playing that with like the four by twelve cabinet. So I think he had number two and number four, and then number five was Eric Johnson's, and then there's some other ones. There's some that I've seen that have like snake skin on them, and there's some black Tolex ones, and um, you know, but it's just like there's not a lot of information on them, you know, like people, people have those things locked up somewhere and they're just not available. Hmm. So that's really interesting. I never knew that of that model, he may have only made, you're saying 10 to 12 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why they're so special. Yeah. Actually, I just remember number four. So mayor has number two and number four wow. and uh, number two was really Jackson Brown's number four was Henry Kaiser's. And, um, you know, when I was talking earlier about the cathode follower, it's funny yeah. like that, that is what I think really defines the, the steel string singer sound, but that's not in every steel string singer, hmm. which is crazy. So like I, I, out of mayors, I know number two definitely has it. That was the original Jackson Brown one. Number four, um, I think was in a combo shell or something. Um, maybe that was the blue, there was like a blue suede one and, uh, that doesn't have the cathode follower. So I'm not sure if that one is still, you know, as percussive or, or, you know, really seems as turbocharged as the ones with the cathode follower, but yeah, man, they're all a little bit different. What do you think's Dumble's greatest amp? Um, I, you know, I, I have to lean back to the overdrive special just because that's the one that is, you know, it's kind of the most legendary. And for me, like the Dumble tone is the, robin ford 1980s overdrive you know smooth it's got the sustain the saturation um you know really chirpy and and kind of when you play it, you almost feel like you're playing a saxophone you know really kind of you can just dig in and the amp just kind of responds the right way you get the controlled feedback and that's the dumble tone for me now i love the the singer i mean if i had to just if i had if i had to choose a clean tone that would be it you know i love that high output clean um you know one of the things i always felt like when i when i played a singer was that uh you had the attributes of an overdriven amp but the amp wasn't overdriving so you had the the clean um i, I used to call it like clean gain where it was like or a clean lead tone so you'd have uh you know the touch sensitivity the sustain um, you know, like I said before, like all the percussiveness, but the amp would still be clean. And for me, that was always so unique and powerful. And, um, you know, when I, when I play one, you know, I, I always think back to Stevie and you kind of hear all that stuff, um, even in your own playing. Mm -hmm. 